Hi, I'm Matt Mellis. I'm an aerospace engineer for NASA, and I worked on the shuttle program uh, for a good number of years. And I'm here with my uh, colleague today, Kevin Burke, who participated in the acquisition and deployment of uh, the 30 or so clips that you're going to see in just a few minutes. Now, um, and Kevin, thanks for being here today. <laughs> Glad to be here, Matt. <laughs> uh, what, what you're going to see is uh, what I consider to be the best of the best, state-of-the-art imagery on both film and high-definition video uh, that the Space Shuttle program is capable of producing today. And uh, not only does it serve a technical purpose, um, and we'll get into a lot of that detail as we get into the, uh, the movies here, but it also uh, serves as an enormous inspirational and educational aspect uh, for, uh, for all of NASA's stakeholders. There's a number of intents that we have for this production, and one of them is to pay tribute and commemorate the shuttle program, which has essentially been a 30-year program, and it's nearing completion as we uh, go to final print with this production. We also want to pay tribute to the men and women that made all of this imagery possible over the years of different missions and launches that we've had. And also to uh, give a view that not very many people see outside the NASA family of these fantastic pictures that are used largely for engineering purposes uh, and to let everyone on the outside of the NASA family uh, have insight as to, um, to what goes on with the shuttle when it launches. I think this is a very moving uh, set of clips that you're about to see. We're opening here with this uh, somewhat stylized view of one of the launch sequences that actually is going to play out in the in the upcoming clips, and uh, I've got a little soft focus on it, and I uh, thought we would open it up with a, a couple of fun facts about the shuttle. It really is an amazing piece of equipment. It has phenomenal amount of fuel that it burns over the eight minutes uh, during its trip to orbit, and when they get up there. Um, in that short eight minutes, they're going about five miles a second, which is a pretty spectacular achievement for a piece of machinery. So uh, this is how it all happens. This is how the, the, uh, the machine does its job, and uh, the film speaks volumes. Timecode is UTC timecode. It's an IRB format. And the uh, three uh, digits that are moving in the upper right-hand corner uh, would be representing a thousandth of a second. Now the purpose of this camera, uh, they all have different purposes. These, most of these, uh, if not all of these cameras that you're going to see in this production are engineering uh, cameras to look for different engineering aspects of, of the launch process. And so the purpose of this one is to check to make sure ignition is going off okay, which is what you're seeing here. Main engine start is just happening, and you can see the engines are starting one at a time. And uh, again, they go on for about six seconds. Computers are making sure that everything's working. And at uh, T minus zero, those boosters are going to fire, and uh, you'll see a big puff of smoke come out of the flame trench there, and it'll get sucked back down in uh, as the boosters come off the pad. I should say that these boosters uh, shed about 10,000 pounds of mass per second once they're lit up. Uh, and that's each, so it's 20,000 pounds combined. And you can really get the feel of, of uh, that awesome magnitude by looking at these images. Now if you look, you can see the boosters kind of surging. It's not a continuous uh, pass. It sort of pushes and then slows down a little bit. And what you're seeing there is the natural frequency of the booster thrust this camera view is uh, on the pad perimeter. It's located at camera site three. It's about 1,273 feet away from the uh, from the vehicle. This is a fantastic uh, capture of what what remains behind after the vehicle clears the towers. You have all of this water and steam uh, being pushed around in this amazing uh, hostile acoustic environment. I mean, look at what's going on there. This is all acoustic noise and and shock. Uh, coming from the boosters and the SSMEs. Yeah, you can see the sparkers going there, just getting ready to turn uh, the main engines on. Absolutely gorgeous day, really accentuated by this shot. Blue sky in the background. Goes great with the, uh, the white exhaust plume coming out there. This is a uh, Dog 68. It's a uh, 35 millimeter camera and it's really uh, 
uh, intended to be a documentary camera. So it's running at uh, 28 uh, frames per second, uh, not really a, a high speed camera. So it's, it's almost real time, a real time camera view. It's a, just a really beautiful shot. And uh, because it's a documentary camera, we're able to uh, uh, enlarge the aperture so that the timing block isn't taking up image area and present it in its uh, widescreen view. And I think it's quite dramatic. Nice shot of the SSMEs there. It, it always amazes me how transparent the exhaust coming out of the SSMEs is. Now this uh, Kineto tracking mount is, uh, is controlled by an operator, manually controlled by an operator uh, who's sitting in the LCC on the second floor uh, below the firing room. And uh, the person, he or she, is using a, a trackball to uh, track um, the, the vehicle. Yeah, it's undoubtedly uh, a very complex system to have all these cameras operate uh, flawlessly for each launch. They're very important, if not critical, for, for shuttle launches. And um, it's an amazing achievement that uh, all the men and women who, who work on this are able to uh, do it uh, with such a degree of reliability every launch. You know, th this was a really unusual day because you just mentioned earlier that, you know, from not all, from all views is the lighting going to be as good, but this is about as good as it gets. I mean, each and every one of these camera views is well exposed, uh, both from an engineering and a beauty standpoint. Uh, they're all very, very nice shots. And it's why we selected 124 uh, to be the predominant content in this movie. Beautiful shot looking up the tail end of the, uh, the stack. One of the reasons I selected this shot uh, to be included on the DVD is because um, I thought it was really striking and really beautiful how in their role program as they went into their role the the sun sort of peaks over like it does here and, and you can see the name pop out and uh, slowly the whole orbiter becomes lit with the uh, with the evening sun. In this particular view this is uh, from STS-114 return to flight so this was uh, in July 26th of uh, 2005 and uh, we're about one, about two miles from the pad, just south of uh, pad 39B here. And the camera is, uh, is cocked at a uh, 45 degree angle to enable maximum use of the uh, 16 by nine aspect ratio that uh, is uh, available with the uh, HD TV cameras. The tracker that's uh, capturing and tracking this image is a, uh, a dome system. It's a distant object altitude measurement system. This is a very long focal length lens, uh, somewhere on the order of, of approaching 500 inches in focal length. Yeah, these are effectively telescopes, right? Telescope lenses, that is, that is correct. And uh, these are part of the, uh, the uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Patrick Air Force Base range safety uh, assets. Uh, these trackers are used primarily to uh, ensure the safety of the range. Uh, another distinguishing feature of uh, this image, uh, besides the exceptional optical quality, um, is the, uh, the focus is actually driven by uh, range data uh, to keep uh, the image in focus as it passes through um, the various distances that you'll see here. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to, to see the absolute clarity that you get from such a long distance away. Uh, take notice of the body flap. As you can see, it's vibrating. This is right below the space shuttle main engines on the back of the orbiter there. And you can see a significant vibration in that. Of course, we knew about that in the, in the design process. We knew that, that that body flap would be undergoing that kind of deformation, but it just sort of hints at, at the uh, enormous loads that the vehicle is subject to on the way up uh, into space. And actually, if you watch carefully, you can see the vibrational mode of that for the technical people in the, in the, uh, in, in the viewing audience. You'll actually see the vibrational mode of that change as it goes through a couple of different parts of its flight regime. The solid rocket boosters, as we mentioned in the primary production on this disc, separated about 29 miles in altitude, and you have enormous detail. I mean, you can make out some of the rings on the boosters here. It's uh, just fantastic detail. We're going to see SRB separation in just a few seconds. And uh, the boosters don't actually flame out. They just go to a, a neutral thrust condition, and once they aren't generating any thrust relative to their mass, uh, they obviously don't have any use anymore for the, for the vehicle, so they jettison them via these little miniature boosters, if you will, called booster separation motors. And that's the big cloud you see as they detonate these. You'll see this big cloud that sort of engulfs the orbiter in the tank. And uh, the boosters are sort of safely uh, moved back away from the, the orbiter in the, in the tank, so there's no 
possible uh, conflict or, or impact. We want to dedicate this movie to uh, all of the men and women over the 30 years of the program or so that have uh, committed themselves to capturing all of these fine images. It's uh, amazing work, uh, it takes a lot of commitment, and it's extraordinarily tough to do so, and uh, our hat's off to them.